Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Blue Canoe Clinic and Lab. I'm Karen Taylor. And I'm Laura McIndoo, and Karen and I are the Blue Canoe Education Team. We're happy to have everyone here today. Uh, today, we have a special uh, thir fourth or third Thursday. Is it third Thursday, Penny? Third. <laughs> everyone say third Thursday. Third. Purple third. shirt, third <laughs> Thursday. So the purple shirt, I wear my purple, I'll call this a shirt, on the third Thursday. On third Thursdays, we have users of Blue Canoe, meaning learners of English, as well as teachers who use Blue Canoe and the color vowel approach for teaching. And so it's a really wonderful mixed bag where everybody comes together and uh, we're here to, you know, we can answer questions and we're also here to share new ideas with you. Um, and so today, since we have so many new people in the room, I'll start with a warm up. Let's go ahead and just warm up with the chart, kind of the old fashioned way. Uh, if you've been with me lately in other webinars, you know I like to keep things fun and fresh and, and sometimes it's good to go right back down to the basics. So let's do the basic warm up, repeating after me. And um, we'll keep ourselves muted so that we don't jam the airwaves. And I'll use, um, oh, I don't know, Dilnosa, you wanna be my, my answering party? You wanna repeat after me? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Great. So we'll start up here and Dilnosa will repeat after me. You can repeat with her. Here we go. Green tea E. Green tea E. Silver pin E. Silver pin E. Gray day A. Gray day A. Red pepper E. Red pepper a eh. black cat a eh. black cat a eh. <laughs> you remind me my phonetic class <laughs> <laughs> but more beautiful than ever right with all the color <laughs> here we go olive sock ah olive sock ah you're doing great auburn dog ah auburn dog ah Turquoise toy oi. Turquoise toy oi. Orange door or. Orange door or. Rose boat o. Rose boat o. Wooden hook o. Wooden hook o. Blue moon o. Blue moon ooh. A cup of mustard ah. A cup of mustard ah. Nice. Purple shirt er. Purple shirt er. Brown cow ow. Brown cow ow. White tie eye. White tie eye. Nice. And so these are the vowels of English by sound, not by letter. Um, so we're always happy to come back to the chart because every time we go back, it helps us internalize these color phrase associations. And we can start thinking about words and phrases as having a color, right? Um, so with that in mind, now we can start to do all kinds of fun stuff, can't we, Laura? Yes. <laughs> So as Karen was saying, um, we usually use the chart to um, talk about the color of a word. So in lessons, um, usually a learner will ask me, what color is this word? And we talk about the color, but we're going to work on something tonight with sort of the opposite. We're actually going to talk about a color first and get our brains really thinking about a certain color. And we're going to develop a whole list of words on one color, which is also kind of like the flip of what we normally do, right? So um, tonight we're going to play um, Color Gories. It's a game that we do in class a lot. And it's not a real word, Color Gories, but it sounds like categories. <laughs> and so it's, it's a category game that we play with color. So what we want to do as a group is to think about as many words in English that have the main stress all the same color. And tonight we're going to do Rose Boat O. Right? Rose, boat, O. Oh. And remember, we mean O oh, the sound, not necessarily O oh, the letter. And so this is 
a, definitely a different process. And I think you might find it interesting um, to think of these words because you, you will think of the way a word is spelled maybe, and sometimes it might be tricky. So this is why this can be really fun. We're gonna come up with a list of words and you might be surprised which ones are rows and which ones are not. And for this, we're going to use the chat because we have too many people in the room. Um, it is fun to do with a class if you have a, a smaller group, but for tonight's purpose, we're gonna just use the chat. So go ahead and in your chat, um, go ahead and just type words that you think might be rows, boat, o words. Karen's going to put them into a spreadsheet. Is that right, Karen? You're going to list them? Yeah. So I'm just going to put them in a simple PowerPoint, but a spreadsheet was a great idea. Well, either way. But um, so when you do this process, go ahead and use your hand, okay? If you feel um, self-conscious or something, you can stop your video, but take that hand out and definitely use that. So you can go, oh, oh, and go ahead, since you're on mute, go ahead and say words out loud so you can check. Right, so that word remote, right? Oh, rose boat remote. That's a rose boat word. Rose boat control, good. Rose boat ocean, good. Keep them coming. We'll give you a couple minutes to think. Push yourself toward multi-syllable words, words that have two or three or four syllables. That's but harder. The stressed vowel being rose. Mm -hmm. All right. Local, good one. Colonial, oh, Robin, that's a good one. Rose boat, colonial. Colloquial, wow, Robin. <laughs> so again, when we, we know from Blue Canoe and we know from Color Vowel that you should be hearing that O sound when you open your hand, like colonial. Rose, boat, O. Oh, it's a good test. Mm -hmm. And here's a good word that someone wrote in, opinion. It's actually got two O's in the spelling, but if you use your hand, where's the stress for that? Opinion, opi it's actually silver pin opinion, even though it's spelled with two O's. So it can be tricky. Relocated, nice one, Skip. Oh, I like yogurt. You guys are good. Oh, there we go. Suppose. Proposal. <coughs> nice. Na Nagoya. Is that a place, Matthew? Ocean. Frozen yogurt. <laughs> Demotion. I'm going to have to stop the list pretty soon. Frozen yogurt is fantastic. Keep yeah. going. A couple more minutes. These are really great words. They're wonderful. Postponement. Jennifer, that's great. Promotion. Motorcycle. That's excellent. Demotion. I don't want that. No, but it's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> okra. Okra like the vegetable? I like yeah. that. And how about promotion? That's the positive one, right? Do we have that yet? Okay. Promotion. We have proposal. I have proposal twice, so I'll change one to promotion. All right. Well, that was lovely. Any more words? Put them right in there. Okay, keep going. Gosh, I wish I had you guys, um, when I'm trying to think of lists of words. <laughs> These are wonderful. Yeah, they are. Stoat. Oh, I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> I think we. I think I found my word of the night that I don't know. Linda, very good. <laughs> the kind right. of weasel. Oh, kind of weasel. No wonder I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey, Karen, you got ocean twice. I've got ocean twice. Great. Give me another word we don't have up here yet. Postponement. Mm -hmm. Postponement, okay. So I can't even find one of the oceans. Okay, postponement. Postpone, is there an E? Postponement. Yes. Postponement. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. Guess what we're going to do next, teachers? <laughs> what can we do with all of these rose words? I don't know what to do. <laughs> 
No, what we normally do when we start accumulating so many words of the same color is we take advantage of them by flooding. And so if you haven't done flooding before, I'll lead you through it. And if you have, of course, this will feel familiar. But if you've done it before, I want you to try to try, try to feel the sensation or the noticing feeling because you won't actually feel your brain doing anything different through your, you know, through your senses because we don't have nerve endings up there for that. Um, but you might be able to notice how musical it feels um, because you're going to hear a repetition of sound. So we're going to walk through these words with our hands, uh, saying them out loud, rows, boat, and then we'll come right down the first column, the second column, and the third column. And why don't we just take a, a second or a moment of breathing between each column because we'll get tired, but we're going to go fairly quickly, right? Uh, so we'll do this together and no repetition. It's right there with me. Are we ready? Rose, boat, remote control, globe, coat, foat. <laughs> I'll start over. Here we go one more time. Rose, coat, remote control, globe, coat, float, postponement, load, no, strobe, frozen yogurt, demotion. <gasps> Joke, floor, colonial, snow, stove, low, troll, gloat, oatmeal, promotion, okra, relocated, who, yogurt, bow, suppose, proposal, so, Nagoya, and ocean, motorcycle, rose, boat, oh. oh. Wow, I'm ready to take a nap. <laughs> That was great. So now that we've done that, we're, we're ready to really start uh, digging in or diving in deeper with rose words, I think, Laura. Yeah. You want to take us that far? Let's go to another sure. step further. All right. So um, what we're showing you tonight are some crossword puzzles that I've created for Colored Vowel. And um, instead of just giving you the crossword puzzle, we're kind of working at this from the back way in. And so I'm going to give you a clue, which is the sentence or the definition of a word. And I want you to think um, of a rose boat word that would answer the, um, the definition, okay? So for example, um, what do you take with a camera? And go ahead and put the answer in the chat. And don't say picture because that would be silver pin picture, right? Right, so say rose boat photo, right? Or a photograph, good. So in the crossword puzzle, how do you know if it's photo or photograph? Because they're both rose boat words. Obviously in a crossword puzzle, um, you have the number of letters. So either photo or photograph will fit. Excellent. Okay, here's another one. Um, what's the opposite of quickly? The opposite of quickly. Good. Slowly, right? And again, is it slow or slowly? Depends on how many letters. Good. All right, here's an easy one. What is the only rose boat month of the year? So you can think of this the first. Oh, you guys are good. Rose boat October. Excellent. Okay, um, this is one that you guys came up with already. When you get a better position at work with better pay, you get a Promotion. Karen, I think I have to make these puzzles harder. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> They're getting them really fast. Okay, let's do a couple more. I don't want to give you all of them. Um, this is a quote. And so this is a saying in English. Um, it's where there is fire, there is... Got it. Where there is fire, there is rose boat smoke. Excellent. How about um, to ask someone to marry you? Rose, boat. Good, we've got propose and proposal. So again, the clue is to ask someone. It would be the verb form, right? Which is um, propose. Good. And so the difference between like um, slow or slowly, propose and proposal, again, um, you can use the, the puzzle to actually check. Let's do two more. Um, what is to not sink, to stay on top of the water? Oh, these are definitely too easy. <laughs> Good. Rose, boat, float. 
great. And um, one more. When you need money, you go to the bank. Oh, see, Robin, I hadn't even finished. <laughs> when you it's need like money, you, <laughs> I like this. you go to the bank and ask for a loan. Right, you don't ask for money, you ask for a loan, rose boat loan. You guys are amazing. That's great. Yeah. Karen, do you want to show them the puzzle? Sure. Okay. So I've been, uh, here we go. So here's the puzzle. I've, I've filled in some of the answers. I had to go in and delete my other answers because I had already <laughs> done this in particular. <laughs> uh, it does keep your answers of your crossword teachers. So if you use this with students and you've already done it once, um, beware. You know, you'll want to go in and erase those words. <laughs> Yeah, but it's so much fun. I really like, you know, the way that it highlights everything. I can see exactly where the question is. Yep. Um, and so you vote for that person and so forth, right? I like this website a lot. And um, I like using crosswords with students. Um, I think it's fun for a student, just like with photo and photograph, um, to figure out which word we're talking about. And also, um, learners you can learn a lot about what you think like if you think you know how to spell the word but maybe you don't or how do you how do you spell that rose boat sound right so after you fill in all of these answers you can go back and think about these 14 or 15 rose boat words and really see how that sound the rose boat sound is actually spelled is it with an o which it is in a lot of places but there are other ways to spell it like in nine down right there to not sink, to float, yeah. So O can also be spelled O-A. So you can learn a lot by doing these puzzles. Um, it can check your mistakes. And this website, if you, um, Karen, can you spell that one wrong right there? A person sure. who is in the army. So, soldier, what happens if it's wrong? And click on another, um, yeah, three. There we go. Uh -huh. Good. So it tells you that whole thing is red. So you know that there's a mistake somewhere and you can try it or you can use your blue canoe dictionary and look up the word. Perfect. Yeah. That's Great. a lot of fun. Great. Uh, so this was from our a recent post in blue canoes Facebook page. A lot of fun. Uh, if you've seen these now, you know, uh, to click on those and do them. Why not do them when you see them? You know, it's just a perfect little uh, distraction from everything else we have to do in a given day. Uh, also on, you know, all of this is the Facebook page for Blue Canoe. If you haven't already gone there and liked it, uh, this is a great time to do that. And that way it shows up in your own feed. And I'll put that out here in, um, in the chat for you. There it is. Um, and I just want to say that right now we are going through the colors on the chart. And so we've gone all the way around from green and we're, I'm doing um, wooden hook this week. And so if you could join us on social media today, I posted the wooden hook puzzle. Um, and I will continue with, you know, blue and mustard and brown and white. And then my plan, I think, is to go back and make some that are of different levels. So let me know what you think about the levels because um, I normally teach kind of advanced, um, high intermediate advanced adult education learners, um, but I would like to do some possibly for K through 12 learners, um, lower levels or more advanced or academic or whatever. So on social media, please be in touch with us and let, let us know what you'd like to see because I love making these puzzles and it would be nice to have a large bank of them for you guys to practice with. Teachers, you can make your own crosswords. This mm -hmm. person, this um, guy who has made this website, I, I can't remember his name right now, but Laura's been in touch, right? He's very generous, he's very talented, and you can actually make your own. Uh, and if you do, it shows up in the find a crossword search. So if we put in, uh, for example, by the way, blue moon, and you look in here, you can actually come down and find quite a few different puzzles that fit the fit that kind of description, but you will also actually find our blue moon um, uh, crossword here. Um, so that's a great way to get listed as well. Yeah. And I'm actually um, titling all of them the same. Can you type in color vowel crossword there and see what comes up? Yeah, just type in that. There we go. We've There's black cats, 
blue, blue moon, moon, green tea, yeah. So um, for the ones that I'm making, even for the ones in the future that will be harder and easier, I'm gonna start all of them with color vowel crossword because I'm sure there are other crosswords out there with black cats and blue moons. So to make them easier to find, I will always do a color vowel crossword on them. So if you're making a color vowel crossword specifically, um, please put color vowel in the title so we can find yours as well. Yeah, exactly, beautiful. So I was thinking we could finish out our session by going back to our uh, wooden, I know some of you were looking yeah. at this and you were spying. And Matthew, <laughs> Matthew just noted very astutely, it says wooden hook seems a little limited. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Matthew, yeah, it's a very small, it's a much right. smaller puzzle than what you normally make, Laura. It is. And so the puzzles reflect our language. It reflects the reality of English. And in English, we do not have many wooden hook words to say or unfortunately to make a puzzle out of. And so um, <laughs> this one is actually quite hard for me. And I did a lot of internet searching and looking through our word lists. And so, Matthew, I promise that the next one I will try to find some more wooden hook words to um, make it larger, or I would be open to suggestions from you guys as well. If you Aye. want to type in some um, multi-syllable wooden hook words. Ooh, by hook or by crook. We could do, um, ooh, Karen, we could do phrases and sayings. Idioms. Idioms. I've, uh, I've always said like, uh, um... I've always been kind of fascinated by wooden hook. I think it's one of the most intriguing uh, sounds of the color vowel chart. You're right. It's so unique. It's so, you know, out there. It is. It's so unique that in a lot of um, typical classroom materials, it's not even included. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it is very it's special. It's got a name for so long. It's easy for right. you to forget about it, right? Yeah, when I was doing the research for this puzzle this week, I had to look up under the other vowel category to find words with wooden hook sound. That's right. But the yeah. ones that we do have, we use a lot, right? And just as a reminder about wooden hook for our learners, um, remember that it's very, you know, that it's very similar to blue because it's easy to confuse with blue. Uh, mm -hmm. But when we use the chart itself with those yoga videos from Blue Canoe, we can come down, ooh, Ah, right, just as I open up, ooh, 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 we can come down into wooden. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so it's a little bit more of an open jaw with the same blue lips, but they're going to open a little bit because the jaw has gone down slightly. So that's one I mean, way to move into it. I may be Any mistaken, but, but I think for uh, uh, Scottish speakers of English, uh, they're the same, right? That's right. Yes. Yep. For Scottish speakers, they are very, they're, they're the same sound and for some others too. That's, that's a good point. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And um, so if learners um, are having trouble with some of these words, if you're doing a puzzle and it's hard for you to think of these words, it might be because you don't, you're not familiar with that sound in your language. But don't forget about the Blue Canoe videos um, on the app that basically talk you through what Karen just showed you. Um, how to distinguish blue from wood, because um, when you do this process, you might come up with a whole bunch of words that are actually blue, for example. So um, we have a lot of different resources explaining the difference between blue and wooden and silver and green and things like that. So don't forget that we're here to help you work, through, work those out. So should we go ahead and do a little uh, yeah. wooden hook foot, right? Mm -hmm. What about number four? Any volunteers to answer number four with an open hand as we finish out our session? Four down. Four down. <laughs> there we go, Robin. So we can watch her, right? Wooden hook football. Uh huh. How about number one down? Uh-huh. A person whose job it is to cut up meat in a store to sell. <laughs> Laura did a great job of making sure that um, nobody was going to miss the full meaning. <laughs> Complete, um, right? You have to be careful. <laughs> I, I'm, trying trying to make, I'm trying to make clear that gets the heart of the word but aren't too long and aren't too short and aren't misunderstood. 
Um, what about Matthew? nine? Uh, yeah. Matthew, you asked about nine, something like a pillow that goes on a couch or chair. Cushion. Good. Cushion. Ah, there. There you go. <laughs> there we go. I'll get better at spelling as we go along. Any others that were interesting to you? Looking down here, we've got, how about number two? We have, so that was wooden hook cushion. Cushion, not yeah. blue moon. Yep. Not blue moon. Number two could have two words that um, fit that. A piece of furniture used for storing books that has several shelves. Oh, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say bookshelf because I think that's more my style, but I run out of space. And a bookshelf is just one shelf, but a piece of furniture with several shelves is a bookcase. A bookcase. You can hook bookcase. That's interesting. Can you do um, seven down? Seven down. I don't know if everybody can see that. The simple past of the verb to stand. I stand every day and yesterday I stand. Oh, wooden hook stood. All right. So I uh, will leave everyone with that. We have here in the text. If you want to go ahead and do that wooden hook crossword, that's also sitting there in. Thank you, Robin. Here's wooden hook push. Yeah. And now I want this to be soot. What is it? To turn your eyes towards something in order to see it. Ooh. What is that? <laughs> Karen, if you notice, your three down is red. Oh, it is. Three down. To tug or exert force on something, to move it towards you like towards a you. Towards Oh, you, not away from you. There oh, you go. There we there go. go. Thank you. Oh, that's much easier now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, learners, if you are in that situation, <laughs> go back and notice if something is red, right? So, you're not trying to think of a word that starts. <laughs> It took me a few rounds of these to realize that I had some errors. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think it's great, you know, to have something like this where um, my, I always talk about my husband, he's non-native speaker of English, and um, he just generally isn't drawn to word games because he doesn't think that they're for him. Um, mm -hmm. But we actually do these together when we find them on, on Facebook and elsewhere. We That's do cool. Laura's. Yeah, That's so great. we have a lot of fun. Good. All right. Um, we do have a couple minutes. We're, we're finishing up our session. Do we have any questions um, or requests for future mm -hmm. lab classes? Anything that you would like, please put that in the chat. And feel free to email us at feedback at bluecanoelearning.com. That's a great place because that email goes to all of us on the education team and the entire Blue Canoe team. Okay. I want to thank everybody for coming today. We, you know, it's a summertime. We don't have a lot of color vowel activity going on, except later this month, we have Dr. Robin Barr, who's right here in the room. She'll be delivering her wonderful color vowel enhanced lecture on the great vowel shift. Uh, that's offered through colorvowel.com, where we'll be uh, sponsoring that event. We look forward to seeing a lot of you there. It's going to be offered as a live webinar, but it will also be offered as an on-demand webinar to everyone who registers. So take a moment to go to colorval.com and register for that talk. Uh, I think it's going to be just wonderfully accessible to everyone uh, because why? Uh, Robin, because we're going to try to explain English spelling, why English spelling is weird using the color vowels. Wonderful. Yeah. And so we'll understand whenever you've heard me say that English spelling is not phonetic, but rather it's historical. Uh, now you get to hear the rest of the story to that statement. Okay, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Remain safe and healthy. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>